contract folks that are from, uh, the, one of them is actually from the town where the candle factory was at. He's uh, found all his family at this point, but lots of friends that are still missing. Um, so our project is getting two tractor trailers together between now and Wednesday morning to send out there full of supplies. Uh, so I'd love to be able to say that Lindenburg County helps. So if anybody has an interest in cleaning supplies, personal care, water, non-perishable, they said, think outside the box what you might would need if you were in that situation. They'll take anything at this point, like lots of money's coming in, but not actual things. So I know we're really a community of doing, and so if you can share it out with folks today from 3 to 4.30, I'll be back up here at the fellowship hall to receive things. And then tomorrow, Brenda Barnes and Marty Buchanan have volunteered to be here from 2 to 5.30. So if you can share that with folks in the I think that would be really great if we can get some things together. Pretty simple dollar truth, so <laughs> toothpaste, I mean, anything would be appreciated. So thanks. All right, 3 to 4.30 today. Good and I'll, I'll ask, uh, so we send an email this afternoon just to let everybody who's not here know. Absolutely. Any other announcements? Let's begin our worship service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the day of the Lord and the day of preparation for our coming King. Let us come before our God as we receive the joy and grace He has prepared for us today.
we read from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 8 to 10. A highway will be there, a roadway, and it will be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not travel on it, but it will be for the one who walks that way, and fools will not wander on it. No lion will be there, nor will any vicious animal go up on it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will walk there. And the redeemed of the Lord will return, and come to Zion with joyful shouting, and everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sign will flee away. I invite you all to call to worship. Will you stand if you are able? We light this candle as symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O oh God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. May the joy of Christ fill our hearts and minds. May the joy of our salvation spread to our neighbors and our communities until all the world chimes into our shouts of praise. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is 158, Come Christians, Join the Sing. Make a room in our hearts for Him. 
You remember this guy, the John the Baptist, he was a prophet. <coughs> and he was born about six months before Jesus. And more importantly, God used him as a messenger for the people of Israel, proclaiming about the coming of Jesus. While he served as God's servant, God's prophet, he stayed in the wilderness and preached there. Specifically, he emphasized that people should prepare their hearts and minds since their Savior is coming soon. So he told them to repent their sins and get baptized with water. And through this message, John the Baptist wanted them to believe Jesus is the real Messiah to them. And one day, the followers of John the Baptist wondered if Jesus is the Messiah they were really looking, waiting for. And actually, they had been misunderstanding that their teacher, the John the Baptist, would be the one who would save them. Because their teacher preached God's news, God's word with power, and also other people started to think the same. So they wondered and went to Jesus. If you read, read the book of Matthew 11, verses 3 through 5, they met with Jesus and asked, Are you really the Messiah? We have been waiting for. Or should we keep looking for someone else? And Jesus replied, Go back to John and tell him about what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to, the, to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. But actually, John and his followers have been waiting and looking for the Messiah for so long, and, Je and John's followers I needed to be sure Jesus was the one. So Jesus had to remind them of all the miracles and the wonderful things that have been happening since he, he began preaching. So many things pointed to the truth that Jesus was the true Messiah. The Savior of the world was here. This search for the Messiah is like waiting for Christmas Day to arrive. We know that Christmas is coming, the signs are everywhere, lights glow on houses and stores, green trees are decorated with beautiful ornaments, great presents are appearing under the trees, and packages arrive in the mail. Christmas is coming, but it seems like it's such a long time to wait until it's finally here. I think to the followers of John the Baptist, it seemed as if they had been waiting forever for God's promise to want the Messiah to arrive. But when Jesus finally came, did they need to keep looking? No, I don't think so. The Savior sent by God was finally around them. It would have been foolish to keep looking. When Christmas morning finally arrives, we have to keep waiting and counting the days until it's here. No. When Christmas comes, what we have to do is to celebrate Jesus coming together first. And then we need to listen to what he says to us. And also follow what he teaches us. Since he's already with us, we don't have to keep waiting. And as we wait for Christmas to come, we know that we have found the one that the world has been waiting for. Jesus is Messiah, the Savior of our world. We don't have to keep looking and keep searching. We have found God's Son, Jesus. And that's one of our reasons that we celebrate Christmas. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to us and to the whole world. You're so glad that we don't have to keep looking and searching. We have found and known the Messiah from the Bible and from our church community and, and from our hearts. So now give us ears to listen to your words and allow us to your wisdom, us your wisdom and boldness to follow you. 
Ten spolu je městská. Amen. Now I'm going to the prayer of illumination. Let's pray together. Holy God, we now pray that you will illuminate our minds more and more, that we look to the Jesus Christ, our living King, and the coming King. Open our eyes to see all your things in your word of truth. Open our ears to hear your voice speaking to us, the word of life. And open our minds so that your Holy Spirit may guide us in all truth and into your way of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds coming up to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and through, thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't exert money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It's been no important as in his back hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you join me in prayer? God of all creation, God of hope, God of peace and grace, and God of joy, we come before you this morning to experience your power and holy presence. In this Advent season, we prepare a space for your Son, Jesus, and our Savior. We want to be filled with the hope and joy that he will bring. We want to, be, want to experience of your kingdom in this time of listening. So speak to us. We we'll listen to you with humble faith. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable 
and pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Our Redeemer, our peace, and our joy. Amen. <coughs> good morning, good morning. I, um, I appreciate your concerns and, and, and encouragement and your, your messages for my, the thing that happened last Sunday. So I have a water bottle here. <laughs> and I have a handkerchief here. So go with me. I'm ready. <laughs> and today we are celebrating the third, sec third Sunday of the Advent. And there is something special about this Sunday. If you look at the Advent lit here, that's the color of the third candle. This one. It's a pink, right? It is the only candle colored in pink. Then do you know why? Why it's pink? The season of Advent leads us to kindness, to a time of preparing our hearts and life for the coming Jesus. But the third Sunday of Advent offers us a break from punishments and opens a time of celebrating the joy we find in Christ and his gift of salvation. That's why we that's why we have the pink candle today, which is called the rose candle. Also, today's Hebrew scripture reading is not shy about delivering joy to us. In the Hebrew Bible reading, we see the prophet Isaiah proclaim, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O Lord of Zion, who great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And additionally, although we didn't read today's episode reading from the assigned lectionary reading, in his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul exalts, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Indeed, today is a day of the Lord filled with joy. However, if you like watching movies that begin with a party, you often see that the person who crashes and ruins the party, right? I think today John the Baptist is the one. Within today's gospel story, we hear, instead of joyful tidings, the furious voice of John the Baptist casting a chill over our joy. He denounces almost curses the crowd with very harsh words in his days. You blew the vipers who want you to flee from the wrath to come. Now, however, it's hard to understand why they are so enraged that the people who came all the way to the wilderness to meet him and get baptized by him, they would have traveled a couple of days or, or a couple of weeks to get there to this well-meaning crowd, what an outburst of anger he expresses. Even some of them were believing or at least having a good impression about it. According to today's Gospel reading, verse 15 says, they had a kind of expectation about John. They wondered in their hearts, he might, he might possibly be the Messiah they were waiting for. Then something seriously wrong with John the Baptist, maybe? And something seriously wrong with the Bible lecture you're reading, maybe? As I kept reading and meditating on today's scriptures, I had to wrestle with it, and it was because I wondered why God has given us this particular gospel reading today, on this Joy Sunday. I couldn't really figure it out. Why is this anger and cursing from John the Baptist in the middle of joy? And last week I kept asking the question to myself again and again, and I, I could find one answer. If we want to be truly joyful, if we really long for the joy of Christmas, then there must be a certain change in us through repentance. John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance, and his preaching was to demand people to change or turn around from their past. 
and to prepare a whole new different way of life with the coming Messiah. <coughs> then, after the change by repentance, I think the added joy becomes fully enjoyable and meaningfully received us with the coming baby, Jesus. With our faith in Jesus the Messiah, without the change of our past, I think we wouldn't be able to find any clues about the joy theme in the middle of Advent season. Thus, our ground of joy in this Advent season should be our faith in Jesus Christ. And again, if we want to be truly joyful, we should be faithful to Jesus, the source of our true joy, and keep away from the sins that block our relationship with Him. But, Making change, I mean, repenting our past in our lives, may not be done only by our peaceful reflections or silent meditations. Making change in our world may not be completed by a couple of nice conversations, or a cup of coffee, or a series of quality lectures or discussion sessions. Sometimes the real change comes with your great deal of passion and energy to truly act and to do good. And this energy is often found in our feeling of anger. Yes, anger. That's why I made today's sermon title, Indignation. Literally means the anger aroused by something unjust, unworthy for me. We commonly understand that anger might be dangerous and destructive when it occupies us. Anger can cause hostility, aggression, and violence. That's so true. I agree with that. And it doesn't matter how old you are and how much you are educated, anger may come and wreck anyone. So these days, anger management related <coughs> counseling books and, and, and Counseling programs are very popular. And personal anger issue is not a private issue any longer. Instead, it's becoming community concern now. However, we also know there, there is a different type of anger. Righteous indignation. Like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had two tours, racism and discrimination. Now, how about faithful anger to the freedom of faith, like the uncountable martyrs who died for their faith and their risk-taking sacrifices? And last week, I shared about the second meaning of Advent season, which is an invitation to the wilderness. And biblically, in, in the history of Israel, the wilderness was understood as a place of preparation. The people of Israel wandered in the wilderness as they prepared to enter the promised land. And Jesus was tempted in the wilderness prior to his public ministry as well. So preparation in the wilderness served to refine God's people. In this historical faith tradition of Israel, John the Baptist preached his message which is the message of preparation to the coming world. <coughs> With this, John the Baptist was standing in the prophetic, prophetic tradition of Israel. If you remember, God sent prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, and Hosea, and more. Their primary mission was to preach radical repentance. I mean, radical changes in people's lives, like what John the Baptist does today. But if you recall their ministries, their messages were often delivered without anger. But their anger was not a simple emotional outburst, but a holy, righteous indignation. From John the Baptist, I read a similar type of anger, that is, the anger at sins. Not only John the Baptist, but also our Jesus, who is usually meek and mild, got angry at people's sins. And the Lord didn't hesitate to address them to make change. 
Also, the Gospels tell us that Jesus was often engaging and his disciples, especially from Peter, and also at the Pharisees and the priests at home. And he even made a whip of cords and drove merchants out of the temple and overturned the money changers' tables. And such anger leads people into action, action to make change. Again, in today's gospel story, the righteous anger of John the Baptist drives the crowd to change, to repent themselves. In the beginning of today's gospel reading, he accelerates his holy anger to the crowd by saying this, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. After this scary, scary warning, the crowd asked John the Baptist, what then should we do? Then John the Baptist teaches them how to make change in their lives and bear actual fruit. However, John the Baptist also doesn't forget to bring good news of Jesus Christ. I baptize you with water, but one, the, the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Even though John the Baptist called the crowd the brood of vipers, now I'm sure that the crowd will find true joy in their anticipation of Jesus, the true Savior. The brothers and sisters in Christ, if we want to be truly joyful with the coming Jesus Christ, we better get indignant at our personal sins and make actions to change our unfaithfulness, our hypocrisy, our unloving heart, our greed, our hard-heartedness, our hatred, our self-centeredness. And if we want to build the kingdom of Jubilee, kingdom of God in our world. We are going to have to be we are going to have holy anger and pervasive bigger sins around us and do something to change our society's issues that deepen divisions among people. In this season of Advent, as we wait for Jesus and his kingdom on earth, what then should we do? So let us be righteous in our anger and sins. Let us be proactive in our faithful actions to make changes. And let us keep anticipating the true joy that is coming by the baby Jesus. Amen. Dear friends, now we will listen to our Cambridge King UMC choir singing. They will be singing Creation for the FPS. <coughs> <coughs>
join me to pray with our families and friends. Gracious and loving God, wonderful maker and our strong defender and our coming king of joy, we come before you this Advent morning and we give all the glories and praises for your amazing grace and redeeming love through your only Son, Jesus Christ. Holy God, we confess that we are weak and fragile, so we easily get tempted and broken. In this season of preparation, we desperately need your help. Especially, Heavenly Father, give us faith in you and allow us your love and power that we can intercede for our families and friends in this time. Through your Spirit, God, encourage us and empower us so our prayers will be a means of your grace and a vehicle of joy for your beloved children in you. Most and most, oh God, we lift up our brothers and sisters in physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Majority powers, we want to hate you, Dr. Natalie and Epperson, Kathleen Moore, Mary Jo Wilkinson, John Warren, Frank Horn, King Callis, Ben Martin, John Spencer, Lee Martin, Tom Nelson, Tommy Hyde, Elaine and Charlie Pierce, Martha Wilkins, Chuck Wicker, and Ed Carter, and Carson and also Lee Nancy, and Brian Staff. Father, as they are facing and struggling with their frustrations and puzzles, pour out your spirit upon them and lay down your powerful and healing hands on them so they may receive a fresh new hope and get renewed in their lives. So God be with them and remind them that you are the one who gives them life. Heavenly Father, I lift up our sister Laura Beverly. She's rescheduled for surgery small. You know how she has been struggling, so we pray that you would come and be with her from the beginning of the surgery until she completely recovers. The most powerful God, we pray that you keep all our families and our whole church community safe with your strong arms. We have families traveling our country. Your traveling mercy be upon their time. Father, this especially protect them from the virus. Gracious God, as we are observing this year, Advent season, we have heard tragic incidents happen to our friends and neighbors in other areas because of the tornadoes they lost their loved ones they lost their homes and jobs they are grieving for their losses and struggling to survive in this time of heaven father just rain down your love and grace upon them you help them through helping hands of yours and give them your promise of hope promise of peace and promise of love to them. So, although they are experiencing difficulties and frustrations now, your promise is to be their foundation for their lives. And your very presence is to be their comforting peace. Our good Father, we trust in you and we have one faith in you, so be our refuge and be a strong power against our enemies. God of the broken and God of the voiceless, you give peace, comfort, encouragement, and endurance to our families and friends who feel loneliness, sorrow, and willingness, and are grieving and crying out in silence. Holy God, cover them with your grace and reveal your holy presence before them. You keep their hearts to the unfailing love. Now we take a moment to center ourselves and take steps toward our God and seeking for His comforting, His loving grace and silence.
We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And let us continue to pray as our Lord taught us while he was here on earth by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A closing hymn this morning has three uh, 467. Trust and obey. We will be singing verses one, two, and four. Please stand with your hands. people of God who are being changed, we go into the world that is being changed, ready to share the good news that the long expected Jesus is coming, that we are being freed from whatever binds us. Glory be to God, who walks with us, sings with us, and struggles with us each and every day. Amen. Go with joy to the Lord. Amen. 